Taylor Smurl. And I'm Liz Dune. And this is Neat. Neat. Uh, Alright, so if you've listened to the podcast, uh, we told you all about ice. Ice and shakers. Yeah. And shakers, yes. So we're going to um, show you a few different ways that you can use ice in your cocktails. I think the first one we're going to show you is just kind of basic as a substitute for ice. You say you're having a sangria and you want to chill it, but you don't want to dilute the mixture. Oh no, way. it's a hot summer day. Oh, yeah. well. My little wine cocktail's getting warm. Oh well, what you don't put ice in your wine, that's what your weird aunt does. Yeah, instead you can freeze some berries or some grapes or any really, really any kind of fruit that has a lot of water in it. Well, and in the case of sangria, if you have all that fruit that's soaked up all that booze, uh, you could take it out of your sangria, like throw it on a tray and let it freeze, Ooh, and that's then a good idea. put it back in. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So then you just plop it back in, and there now you you've go. got berry ice cubes, mm-hmm. and it's a snack. Yeah, and cooling yeah pretty good. I love frozen blueberries. Nice. What else we got going on? What, what else can we do instead of just regular old boring ice? Well, you can also. Instead of freezing your fruit, you can freeze your fruit inside your ice, especially if you have these nice big um, silicone trays. Uh, You can just put the fruit right in there and it makes it kind of cute. We got some blueberries in there. Uh, You can do it with spices. We've got one that we've frozen with some cloves in it just to do it's for decoration and will like slowly release some of that flavor. Yeah, and especially if you have a garnish that it's cute, but you don't necessarily want to encourage your guests to consume it. Uh, right. Putting it in the center of a great big ice cube will, <laughs> will help that. Yeah, and um, uh, as an example of that, we've got some jalapenos that we've frozen in an ice cube. So this is a really nice way to contain that garnish, especially because this one has the seeds still in, so you don't really want to uh, consume that. But we're gonna use this in a spicy margarita. Yeah. So, you know, we've given you our classic margarita spec before, that's two, three quarter, three quarter. Uh, this, I'm just adding a few slices of sliced jalapeno in there. The shaking process is gonna break it down enough. I'm not even gonna bother muddling these. Whip together that three quarters of my curacao, three quarters of my lime juice, and two ounces of tequila. Also, if you've listened to the podcast, we talked about the shakers. This is the Boston shaker I was talking about. Little tin, big tin. Fit into each other. Nice. So you get your garnish contained. It looks really beautiful. It's floating right on the top. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. Kind of cute. Little yeah. spicy marg there. You got your, your jalapenos visible, adding maybe a little bit of heat over time to your drink, but not gonna necessarily be floating around. Yeah, and it just looks really cool and profesh. So if you're doing something, a little soiree at home, and you wanna do margaritas, but you want your friends to think you're super class, this is a good way to do that. Another one you can do, so you can (laughs) add color to your cocktails and your, your ice cubes specifically by using natural dyes like butterfly pea blossoms. We've made some blue ice cubes and even um, put some of those in there. Ooh, look how blue it is. It's like, it's so cute. And we even like put some of the flowers in there if you want it to be extra fancy. And Butterfly Pea Blossom is great because uh, if you listen to the video, one of the way to get those nice clear ice cubes, or even just taste like properly tasting ice cubes is to boil your water first. Um, And so if you've got boiling water anyway, throwing in a tea that's gonna add a dye and maybe even a flavoring element to your ice, uh, to your ice in your cocktail, super easy. It's right there waiting for you. So we just let this butterfly pea sit for like 15 minutes in the water. And yeah, now for a really simple drink, this is gonna make a really cool garnish. So we're just gonna make like, you can do this in your vodka soda, in your, you know, gin and tonic. This is cute. It's a really easy and beautiful way to dress up a tequila soda there. And you made it blue! Yeah. So if you have a really basic drink, um, any sort of highball, this is a fun thing you can do to make it look 
way more extra than it is. All right, there's one more thing that we did with ice and that's uh, we used Dawn's mix and we froze some into some cubes. Yeah, so if you've, if you've watched any of these, I talk about Dawn's mix a lot. It's my favorite like kind of cocktail ingredient that's not liquor. Um, it's a uh, two to one uh, cordial made of grapefruit juice and cinnamon syrup. But of course, one of the biggest problems with cordial is that let's say you're a home bartender, you make a bunch, it will go bad because it has fruit juice as a major component in it. Um, but what you can do is you can freeze that cordial and then you can use it uh, in a couple different ways, one of which we're going to show you right now. So in this beautiful pink ice cube, we already have our Dom's mix. And I'm just going to throw that in a shaker just real quick with some lime and some rum uh, to make just a one cocktail. But what you can also do is if you've got a large format punch for a party, you want it to stay cold and you don't want it to dilute over time, you can freeze some of your like your tea elements or your sweet elements just like this and use that as ice cubes to keep the temperature down without diluting your product. Mm, pretty smart. Yeah. Maybe some of our, our Deacon Giles from Salem. Yeah. Oh my god, we had so much fun with that distillery. It was so cool. They have a really cool um, tasting room. And their donuts are really good too. That's right. That's they have cocktails and donuts. Very limited menu. That's it. Mm. I'm just kind of shaking it to let it start breaking down, but I'm gonna put the whole thing in my drink because it's just gonna get like stronger and more delicious over time. Go. So cute. Mmm. Don's mix. Your favorite. I love it. That is yummy. Great for cinnamon. That's made in heaven. I got one more glass, so that means we got one more drink. <laughs> gonna be an after party here. Yeah, I, we gotta do something with these. Yeah. So in the video, uh, I talked about shaking, and I said that there are lots of different ways to shake. Kind of, you know, you eventually learn different drinks get shake in different ways. As a bartender, you get a whole sort of category of shakes you use. Um, but one that you might have heard about and don't quite understand uh, is something called a dry shake. Um, now you use this anytime you're, traditionally with egg whites, um, anytime you're trying to emulsify something, like whip it into something frothy. Mm. Traditionally you'll see this used with like a uh, whiskey sour, which uh, does have an egg white in it. I know most of you have probably encountered it as just whiskey and sour mix. It can be so much better than that. But do you have to use eggs to get that result? Well, you don't have to. Uh, a lot of you know modern bartenders that are aware of like, hey, vegans or just people that don't necessarily want to consume raw eggs in their cocktail uh, have found a pretty good substitute in aquafaba. What is aquafaba? It's the brine of chickpeas. You can literally strain this off of your can of chickpeas, that water. Uh, bakers will use it a lot of times to add like to like whipped cream, to get whipped cream to get fluffy, mm -hmm. even like baked goods, like vegan bakers. So we're gonna use it to make a vegan sour. Oh cool. So whether you avoid, um, you know, animal products or you just don't wanna consume raw eggs, this will work. Now, I will say one of the important things to note, whether it's egg whites or aquababa, is there is a bit of a chemical reaction that happens. So you wanna add whatever your emulsifying agent is, you wanna add last. So we're gonna make a basic sour build. It's gonna be two ounces of bourbon, three quarter of a simple syrup, and three quarter of lime juice. And then lastly, I'm gonna add uh, about three quarter ounce of my aquafaba. Um, if you're using an egg white, you can just use the whole egg white. Now, this is where the dry shake comes in. To combine um, all of my ingredients together, I'm going to shake it first with no ice. Uh, now I will say, because you've got something that's, that is want to expand, this is definitely not a one-handed shake moment. This is a two hands if you're using a Boston shaker. Uh, you want to make sure this guy stays closed. Fancy shake. And now we're going to add the ice. I like how this cauldron has just become our official ice bucket. <laughs> It's the best. Chewbacca's been replaced. Oh, <laughs> Chewbacca. So nice, you shook it twice. Ooh. I've also seen people do something called the reverse dry shake, 
uh, which is exactly what it sounds. They shake it with ice, then they strain it out, strain out the ice and shake it again. The idea there is that the little bits of ice you get actually help it froth further. Hmm. It's kind of that, I, I think it's a two schools of thought thing. Okay. This is the way I was taught. I have uh, bars that I've worked at that have asked me to do the reverse dry shake. They both work fine. Good to know. Oh, nice, the dickhead frothy. Yep. And then on your froth, you usually want to just sprinkle a little bit of Angostura bitters. Is that for flavor or for pretty? Actually, it's a pretty important thing to put on top when you're dealing with egg whites or aquafaba because both of them have a bit of a pungent smell to them. Oh, okay. You know, you'll see people do like pretty designs. Uh, it's a little bit harder with the aquafaba, you don't get quite as thick of a foam, but definitely with the egg whites, you can get a nice thick froth and you can actually like have little pretty designs on top. Like a cappuccino. <laughs> yeah, it looks really nice, but it's there for a really important reason. So as a bartender, you don't want to skip it because the last, the, the, the nose of a drink is very important. And if the first thing you smell is egg or chickpeas, you're not necessarily thinking, mmm, delicious cocktail. <laughs> Let's see with this, you just, mmm, Angostura. Sorry, right, that's, uh, that's it. It's powerful. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. So nice. Classic, updated, old fashioned, newfangled whiskey sour. Beautiful. Look at our beautiful cocktails. Yeah, I guess. Okay, well, so it's time to get wasted. All right, now. let's invite over a few friends. <laughs> <laughs> no? Okay. No, you're right, you're right. Great. We almost have a rainbow. That's we nice. do. Yeah. Oh, it's so pretty. So lots of things that you can do that are pretty uh, simple ways to upgrade your cocktails and their presentation. Uh, thank you Absurdist uh, for our theme music. Also thank you for watching. Please if you like this, subscribe, leave a comment, um, and feel free to join our Patreon. The link is below. I've been Taylor Sproul. And I've been Liz Dune. And this has been Neat. Bye. Bye-bye. I'll take these two. Okay. Stuck my finger in this one. Okay. It's fine now. It's fine.